All right, we are on and live. Um, I will be call roll. Uh, Mr. McNulty? Here. Ms. Trebellis? Here. Uh, uh, Ms. Harris? Here. Mr. Pierce? I'm here. And Mr. Beer? Here. Great, we have a full quorum this evening. Um, Mr. McNulty, if I may, I just wanna give a brief overview of this application, and then I'll, we can move it forward with the applicant. Um, so what we have this evening is the Route 23 overlay application, RCOD-20-01. Um, this is a sheets proposed at the uh, corner of, the Southwest corner of Orange and 23. Um, we have been working uh, quite, um, quite a lot with the applicant. Uh, we had several pre-application meetings before they formally submitted. Um, so we were, this township was aware that this was coming. Um, we had a technical review last week, or last week, and um, we did have several comments that I did share with the board members um, also last week in regards to this. So um, we'll probably be addressing and discussing a lot of those this evening. Um, but the, the review was done by the county engineers. ODOT was present. Um, regional planning was there, including staff, the township staff, and our consultant, Holly Maddie. Um, and, and I think that's all I really have to share. Um, I'd like to open it up to the applicant and I can show some plans while you discuss and go from there. Okay, great. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, my name is Frank Petrozello. I'm the president of development for Skilkin Gold. Uh, and uh, Beth Kotner is our uh, project manager. Beth, might you uh, introduce all of our other folks uh, on the line, please? Um, yes, thank you, Frank. We have Mike Casano, who is with Sheet. We also have Joe George, who is with CESO, who was our civil engineer. And I believe that's all we have. Uh, okay. And uh, could we, actually, Michelle, could you let Beth do the presentation? Is that okay? Yeah, I can, I can have her share screens. If, if yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my share and then you should be good to go, Beth. Sure. Frank, do you want me to show the site plan? Um, no, let's just hold off a minute. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry, I don't see anybody. Is there is there any way to see everybody's face? Or, or is that uh, a- You can click the view and do gallery view, that might help. Gallery view. There we go. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, good to see people as opposed to just one person. Um, so uh, no secret, uh, we propose to build a uh, sheets at this uh, location uh, at Orange and uh, 23. Uh, sheets, uh, you you can't miss them these days. There's been lots of commercials uh, apparently on television, and uh, we are uh, Sheets is under construction in a various uh, location. Um, sheets is that uh, has over 600 locations, uh, family-owned business based out of rural Pennsylvania, and uh, they come from the uh, food and hospitality industry, uh, not from the fuel industry. Uh, our, uh, this, this facility actually has many, has, has many multiple uses. Not only is it obviously uh, that uh, the facility sells fuel, but there is a, uh, a convenience store component, a small convenience store component. There is also a, a full uh, quick service restaurant, including uh, seating for between 30 and 40 people inside the, uh, inside the, the building. So, uh, and there's also then a, a two bay uh, car wash uh, here. So there are four uses, fuel, uh, car wash, uh, restaurant and um, uh, convenience, convenience store. Uh, we have tried very hard as Sheets has want to do is to, is to fit in and work with communities. You heard uh, Michelle say that we've uh, worked extensively with staff. I think we had probably pre four pre pre application meetings, uh, uh, and uh, it 
you know, I think very, very fruitful. Uh, and uh, so what we have tonight is a result of all of that uh, collaboration. Uh, and uh, I want to say that you did get a long list of, of items uh, last week. Uh, we have worked through them between yesterday and today and have winnowed that down to absolutely very few. Uh, and and not, not through uh, twisting Michelle's arm, but uh, by uh, actually the other way around. <laughs> we, we are uh, uh, being cooperative on, 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 on all, if, if not most items. Uh, what, what we started out with obviously is a, is a site plan, but uh, given the overlay code here, uh, it's not quite conducive to the um, uh, to the type of facility that you would normally associate with a fuel station and, and quick serve restaurant and, and car wash. Uh, the, your your requirement for a certain amount of building uh, frontage uh, out on the street, um, certain width of the property. I believe it's uh, is it uh, Sixty percent. I, I don't know. Whatever percent it is, where we are over it with the way we have worked worked through it, uh, and uh, you also have requirement for sloped sloped roof buildings. Uh, what we have done. Can I see the site plan now, uh, Beth? Please. Yep. What we have done is uh, take a, a sheets prototype and modify it specifically for uh, orange. Uh, for I'm sorry for for this location uh, in Lewis Lewis Center. If we if so the site plan you see here actually let's jump back and let's go to the aerial photograph first please. This the aerial photograph please. One second. I'm sorry, Frank, hold on just a second. I wanted to point out the, the various uh, conditions around the periphery. We have a commercially zoned uh, property immediately to our south, but not for the full south property line. Uh, the front half of, the, of that property line is commercial. The rear half is residential, but it's a uh, orphan lot uh, associated uh, adjacent to the cemetery. Uh, so, uh, you know, we anticipate that being probably never built as a residential property, uh, but uh, right there, yeah, but uh, probably going with uh, commercial at some point or maybe in addition to the uh, cemetery. Uh, an orphan lot, meaning there is no uh, connection to any right of way uh, in order to access it. Uh, what, can you slide it down a little bit so we see the intersection? No, it, this is just a screenshot. So you could just see okay. this. Okay, all right, very good. Yeah, orange is up at the top there. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Beth, can you tell us please what the result of the traffic study is, please? Yes, and, and Joe can help speak to that. But basically, um, we're gonna, ODOT being that the 23 is controlled by ODOT and then West Orange is by the county, um, ODOT has required a diesel lane to turn into our site off of 23. And then Joe, can you help me with West Orange? I believe we're going to extend the diesel lane. Is that correct? So they're, they're gonna maintain the, um, the left turn bound lane heading north. And then on the west side of that lane, they're gonna have a two way left turn lane um, potentially for commercial property that could be on the north of Orange. And we're gonna have to widen the wider right. Orange Road slightly in order and to- and Joe, have they finally approved that study? Yes, county and ODOT both approved. Very good. Okay, so let's go to the site plan now, please. Can you see that? Nope. Not yet. Unlike Zoom, when you share, you, you want to click share your screen, not the application itself. There yeah. we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we see the site plan and uh, the changes Joe just mentioned. Are they reflected on this site plan, Joe? Uh, yes. Okay. So so there's going to be turn lanes and widening on, on orange and then a dro uh, drop lane you can see 
uh, on 23. And it's very good to hear that it's been approved by both the county and by the state. Uh, as part of that, uh, so anyway, if, if you look at the site plan, you can see that the uh, rectangular uh, shape uh, all the way to the east to the right is the store building. The long, narrow uh, rectangle in the center is the uh, pump canopy. And then the building all the way to the west is the, uh, is the car wash, two, two bay car wash. If we zoom in on the, um, on the building out of the corner, please. Yeah, let's scroll up. You can see that there are there is a a, um, a, a pavilion that we are building uh, there to get to the corner, to, uh, and also on the south side. And what we're what we're building there is a connection to the multi-use path and an undercover walkway to in order to get to the store and also uh, outdoor covered uh, seating. Uh, with brick piers and uh, sloped sloped uh, roof, and we've also put a little piece of that on the south uh, south side of the building. So we've essentially um, uh, provided a street wall to the to the structure to uh, provide uh, to meet the objectives of the of the township for for this uh, plan. And we have renderings that we'll show them to you in a minute. And then you see the the fuel station that there are. Uh, uh, 10 uh, dispenser machines uh, that, uh, that can be accessed on both sides. So there are uh, 20 locations. Uh, the, <clears throat> the funny submarine shapes you see just to the west of that, those are where the underground storage tanks are. Uh, and then there are parking spaces there associated with the fuel station. And then there are next the vacuum uh, locations for the, uh, for the uh, cars and then the, the two bay of the car wash. And we have, this is a uh, updated plan, Michelle, because we've uh, moved, we flipped the car wash such that the uh, car wash enters now from the south side uh, and exits on the north side. And that allowed us to make sure that we did not uh, break the 100 foot uh, parking, uh, or I'm sorry, 100 foot uh, building setback uh, from the uh, residentially zoned land to the west and to the south you can see that the, the, the property line along the south there that divides the residentially zoned land to the left from the commercially zoned land to the right. We've also been asked by ODOT to provide a cross access uh, area that uh, yeah, is shown right there in Hatch that will allow the commercially zoned land to access the uh, right in right out that we are building. What this drawing does not show is that we've also been asked and we've agreed to provide cross access to allow this residentially zoned property to be able to get out to Orange. Uh, so that's the basic organization of the site. The, 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 the store itself has uh, two, two major entrance locations, uh, one on the northwest corner and one on the south in the, in the center of the south. Uh, so there are multiple entrances to the building. Okay, if we could look at the uh, renderings, please, to see what this looks like in three dimensions. Well, we're, and, and uh, this, is, this is the high, well, please stop, yes. This is the, uh, I keep calling it high street, 23, 23 elevation. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you're sort of looking Northwest in this view uh, the, uh, there are the, uh, the, the window features that we have placed along the facade there, along with uh, sloped, sloped, <coughs> sloped roof canopies. These are canopies that have metal roofs. They're not, uh, they're not fabric awnings. And then we have the uh, hip roof uh, pavilion pieces that are on the left side, the south side, and on the north side that we discussed, along with metal railings and places for uh, people to eat. So scroll to the next one, please. Uh, this, <clears throat> this is the view coming from the south, looking uh, essentially north on uh, 23. So you're looking at the same facade as we were just looking at, but you can also see the uh, canopy for the pump island in the back, and the canopy has a sloped roof. Keep going. Uh, now you're, you're in the parking lot uh, looking uh, to the northeast. Uh, you can see both major entrances with canopies and also the hip roofs that signal both, uh, both the entrances. And you can see the pavilion piece uh, 
uh, poking out on the right hand side over there. Uh, and of course, more, many more awnings. All the, these windows are all open and into the, uh, into the space. Keep going, please. Oh, okay, that's good. So now we are on Orange Road, essentially, uh, looking, uh, what is it, uh, southeast. Uh, and uh, you can see the pavilion that is that is uh, there, along with the uh, corner entrance uh, and and uh, you know what we've already looked at. Keep going. So just turn view. You can see it there. Keep going, please. And there you can see the the uh, canopy is a, uh, a shed roof. Uh, canopy with uh, open trusses uh, has the uh, uh, stone uh, base to all of the columns uh, along it, and uh, you can also see the the uh, hip roof at the uh, entrance to the uh, to the store. Keep going. Okay, let's let's move on. Uh, okay, uh, now we have also elevations of the car wash. Do you have those, please? Okay, this is. This is a very, very simple car wash building that has a hip roof uh, and it has the same brick and stone materials as the, uh, as the store. This is a uh, potential uh, uh, divergent uh, issue. There is a requirement in your code that uh, no more than 20% of a, a wall be uh, uh, glass or, or, or put it the other way around, 80% needs to be uh, materials on the approved list of which stone and brick are. Uh, since this is a car wash, it's a, it's a machine for, for washing cars uh, and it you know relies on vision in for people just to see what's going on and people that are in cars not to feel claustrophobic. Uh, we have uh, drawn and uh, prefer the building to be this way and we would like your consideration for a divergence to allow this uh, aesthetic. We are not out at the road, uh, either road with this. This is in the back of the property. Uh, and, uh, and that's, uh, you know, essentially that's what our, our desire is there. Can we move on please to the camp? Do you have canopy elevations? Okay, you can see uh, uh, in the middle, those are the end views with the uh, slope, slope roof of the canopy, uh, very simple canopy. No, no big, uh, no big words and the like on it. No, nothing fussy about it. Very straightforward. Uh, there's indirect lighting that lights up the ceiling. There are no lights in the ceiling, uh, which is uh, generally a uh, a problem for uh, for glare. Okay, what more? What more do we have there? That's all we have. Okay, very good. Um, why don't we? Um, why don't we put the uh, site plan back on the on the screen, and uh, let's speak to uh, the divergences. Uh, as as I said earlier, we had a uh, pretty extensive list that we've worked through, and I believe that we've answered affirmatively uh, on on all of them, uh, except for the few that I'm going to list. So. Uh, and now that's assuming that that uh, we have supported this board for this project, but um, we have uh, we have the specific issues. One I've already mentioned, and that is the amount of glass on the car wash building. Um, another is um, the uh, let's see, we've eliminated we've eliminated the need to do that. So really, it's it's that, and then it's this issue of sloped roof. There is a requirement in your code that, that uh, buildings have a pitched roof. Uh, that has been solved by uh, various of different ways in the township, uh, not the least of which is uh, sticking mansards uh, on the edges uh, of, a, of a, uh, a very uh, plain, plain building. We've chosen to uh, do something more dramatic with that by uh, adding the uh, pavilions on either side of the uh, of, uh, our building and also adding uh, more than one of the hip roof entrances to the to the building and that in addition to the awnings. Uh, our canopy is also a sloped roof and the uh, and the car wash uh, building is a sloped roof. 
If you look at all of the amount of frontages of, uh, if you count up all the, the, the facades that have sloped roof on it, uh, and, and you include the canopy for the fuel pumps, about three quarters of, of the facade length of this property has some form of slope roof on it. And we feel as though um, we have acknowledged the, um, uh, the reality of a commercial uh, structure, flat roof, meaning uh, with equipment on it and, and, and the like, uh, and also uh, by developing the uh, additional design elements that we have done uh, to uh, meet the objective of your zoning code. So we, we believe we have done it in a, in a more creative way than has been done in the past. And uh, we hope for your, your concurrence on that. Uh, the last uh, divert, I believe there's only three uh, divergences. That's the, the windows for the car wash, uh, depending on how you look at the sloped roof uh, aspect of your code. And then the third thing is the signage. Can you put up our signage analysis, please? And then I'll be done. <laughs> okay, um, what, what we've done here is uh, we've uh, listed all the signs that we are asking for, their sizes and uh, listed against what is allowable. The wall sign, as we calculate, we're allowed 125 square feet max of wall signs uh, and that uh, only one is allowed per frontage. Now, the problem we have is we, we obviously have two frontages, but we also have essentially uh, three buildings. Uh, we've got the uh, car wash and we have the fuel canopy and we have the main building. So we have three buildings and we have four uh, distinct different uses. So what we, so what we have done is we're not asking for more square footage, but we are asking to be able to um, use reduced signs uh, on our major uh, frontages on uh, 23 on orange for the building as per the code, but we'd also like a uh, sign on the car wash and on one sign on the car wash and one sign on the fuel station canopy. And that gets us up to 85, almost 86 square feet out of the 125 uh, that are allowable. Now, it, now as we go down, there are some other incidental signage. There are some, there are some signs uh, that are part of the fuel station canopy uh, that signify which pumps have diesel on them and which do not. Uh, and there are two each of those, uh, that's 10 square feet. Uh, and then there's, there's, there's more directional information having to do with what's in the pumps. And that's another nine square feet. So we're up to 105 on that. We have images of all this stuff. We can show them to you, but I'm trying to give you the, the scope of it here. Now, the next issue is that there are two ground signs allowable and they're both allowed to be 36 square feet. Uh, our, our sign that we've designed, and we'll show it to you, we were very uh, proud of that sign and it is uh, over uh, by, so, so going, I'm sorry, before I go to that. So we are under on the wall signs by 19 square feet. We are over on the number of signs, however. Uh, on the ground mounted signs, we are over square footage, 13.68 square feet, but we are in compliance with the number, the number of signs. Uh, and, and we've also done the calculation for our changeable copy and we are within the, the allowable 30% uh, 30, 30 uh, uh, <clears throat> the, the, in order to have the changeable copy. So I guess our point of view here is that uh, uh, overall, we are slightly under, about six square feet under the uh, uh, gross, gross allowable square footage of, uh, that would be the two times 36 ground signs, which would be 72, plus the 125 for the building signs, uh, that's 197. Uh, and we are, uh, what, what are we, 190? Yeah and 190, 92. So, so it's, about, uh, it's about six square feet that we are under the overall. Now, uh, Beth, why don't you show everyone the signs so that we know what we're talking about. And then do you have the sign plan first though, please? Yeah. 
You're muted, Beth. One second, yes. I'll share that. And no matter where the signs you saw that were on the renderings, the, the, the plan is correct. There are more signs shown on the renderings because renderers are always uh, optimistic about how many signs they can get. So, uh, so please don't be confused by that. Here's the um, see the plan first. I'd like to see the plan first, though. The sign plan first, please. Sorry. Okay. Um, here we are. Yeah. Uh, so there's there's going to be a ground sign there. The ground sign that you see out at the corner. We've been asked to move that down to the curb cut there, which we've agreed to do. You can see that there is a sign uh, in the center of the uh, facade on 23. On 23. On 23. Sorry, hold on. Right here. Yeah. And then a sign facing orange there. Those are the two on the building. And then one on the canopy facing orange. And then one on the uh, on the car wash facing into the parking lot. So those are the locations for the signs. Now, if we can look at the signs, please. This is the ground sign. You can see it's not just a dumb box, uh, a masonry uh, sign uh, with the fuel pricers, which we, which we need to have uh, located below the uh, three-dimensional uh, sheets uh, logo. And we've agreed to, uh, apparently the allowable height is eight feet. This shows eight foot nine. We are going to uh, lower it down to, uh, to the allowable height. So there is no divergence there. And then do you have any other sign examples? Okay, you can see that the sign, if you zoom in on the end over on the left, on the left, yeah, zoom in a little more. Okay, that is the only sign on that canopy uh, that, that we're looking at. Uh, it's just, you know, within the truss work and it's, uh, and it's, and it's uh, pretty small given the, uh, given the size of that canopy. And then do you show one also on the car wash? Yes. It would okay, and then and one on the car wash that's just above the, the the windows on the car wash. So, Michelle, what did I miss? Well, um, I mean, I think we, you've given a pretty thorough overview. Um, I'd like to open it up to the zoning commission members to get their thoughts. Um, you know, I particularly. Um, as we discussed before, I really wanted to talk to the commission members about the building elevations as they, we do have the architectural expertise on the commission as opposed to the staff directly. So wanted to hear directly from them in regards to that and obviously any other comments they had. Okay, can we put the renderings then back up, Michelle? Or, um, Beth. <laughs> uh, Beth, thank you, Beth. Uh, yeah, let's, yeah. Okay, all right, great, we're ready. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm okay with all the divergences. I think your glass on the car wash, I think that's a great idea. I think that looks great, really. I, I think you've also done a creative job with respect to the requirement for the slope roofs. Yeah, I get it for all the modern buildings. You really need the flat roofs for all the, all the equipment. And, and that's, that's been uh, plaguing us for decades. I also agree with moving that 23 sign to the other end, because what you may not have thought about or seen, there's still lots of trees and obstructions on the north side of 23 on north side of Orange Road. Yes. So I, I think your sign will be seen, put it closer to that deceleration entrance. I think that's absolutely a plus. But no, I, I like it. I think I think you've done a good creative job and have tried to pay attention to the code and have done what you can. I, I, I guess I, I'm not sure why that uh, was there with respect to the 80% of materials versus glass. There may have been some reason, but not altogether sure what that was originally, what the original intention was. But I'm good with it. Thank you, yeah, sir. 
Um, speaking of, and I, I'm sorry, Frank, if you brought this up earlier, but the breezeway thing that the Sheets created, this is a unique concept for Sheets, correct? So this is the yeah, I didn't I didn't play that up very well. This is an absolutely new look for Sheets, and this had to go all the way to people with last names of Sheets to approve. And I was impressed with their ability to be flexible. No, I, I would say this is uh, Rick Beer. I would just say I do like that, um, especially in these days and time. So you're saying you're going to have seating out in that area, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now, now one question I do have for future development. So if you go with the charging stations, uh, future, would you bring that off of this to the south? Or have you guys not even discussed that? Uh, let's go to the site plan. I, I think we did. Did we show, we showed charging stations. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, did, did you? Okay. Yeah. That, right, right there. Yeah. yeah. There are. There's one there in, are eight, in New Albany. Eight, that's why I was yeah. asking. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, okay. this is a, I, I didn't even add that. That That's a fifth use now we're talking about here. This is a the Swiss Army Knives of, uh, of projects, I think. Yeah, that's that's just what I, I, I was concerned about because I know a lot of uh, the competitors are, are going with that, so. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. That answers okay. my question. Great. On the side of the, uh, the building that's facing 23, um, can we see that it just looks like it's just going to be like a solid brick wall? I don't know if it's going to be a solid brick wall there or... Um, this this facade you're talking yeah. about, yes? Yeah. Any any particular reason it wasn't like going up for glass, more glass windows on that side, or is that due to some limitation? Well, the, the problem, it's always a, a balancing act. Uh, obviously, that's all of our service portion of our, of our facility, uh, kitchen, storage, that sort of thing. So what we put there is essentially a, a simulation of, of windows. And, uh, you know, we felt that, that this was a reasonable uh, breakup of that facade, given the fact that we had wings on either side and also the pop out and pop up of that central bay. Uh, and we tried to respect the locations of the downspouts by putting uh, windows in between each one. So I don't know if that makes you feel okay about it or not, but that's that was our thinking. Yeah, my, my just aesthetically looking at it, just because 23 is the main thing, really yeah. in the back of the building, so to speak, uh, versus the openness. Yeah, we, we tried to make it as approachable as we could. Now, what this is not showing is any landscaping of which there will be considerable. So uh, I think that uh, we, we did ourselves a disservice by not showing anything in the environment there. And then over to the right, that little walkway or coverage there, what's gonna be there? Uh, Where is it now? Which way? You go to the right, yeah, right in that To the area. right, yes. That, that part of that is seating all the way out at the corner. There's seating, and then the rest of it is walkway in order to uh, get from the multi-use path at the corner to the entrance of the store. Hey, this is uh, Rick Beer again. Uh, so did I hear you correctly? So you have an agreement for ingress, egress out of that uh, residential? To orange no, 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 no. The, the oh, state, okay. the, the here, the state uh, uh, of Ohio. Uh, it started out with the state of Ohio said that we will grant the right and right out the curb cut on twenty three as long as there is cross access to the south, of which yep. is shown right there. The staff has asked that we also incorporate cross access to this residential uh, parcel. Uh, there. Uh, I, we're not that wild about that, but we also are not that against it either. Uh, I just don't, I, I'm, I'm, we just, we're just uncertain as to, as to all of that, but it's not drawn here, but it, it will be added back if in fact you, you would like us to do that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, right. have you made a decision to add it back, or you're not sure you're going to add that? 
I, I, I would tell you that we, we prefer not to have it, but staff seem to want to have it. So I, I'm looking for the board's uh, opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have a provision for that, um, but you might not need it. Um, it's unclear what's going to happen to that lot. Um, if it becomes part of the cemetery, it probably won't be used um, because they have their own internal access in the cemetery, it looks like. Uh, but since it's unclear um, how to access that lot, this is the logical way um, to have that provision and not need it is better than to have to go back and get it. Yeah, and just for the commission's understanding, that parcel um, is not part of the future land use in the comprehensive plan to be commercial. Mm -hmm. Thought if the commercial does grow along the street, could we expand the commercial boundaries and could that be commercial in the future is what that was our thought. So yeah. Here's one caveat I would like if we if we do that. I if if that if the two parcels are joined into one project, which I think is most likely, mm -hmm. uh, I I don't I don't believe we should be required to provide two cross access locations. So uh, I would like to have something in the agreement that uh, if in fact they, uh, they are joined as a parcel that only the access point out, uh, well, I don't know, I have to ask Sheets which, which one, but only one of them would be, uh, would be uh, allowable. Yeah, I guess I that would be dependent upon what they What's would, that? I guess that would be dependent upon what's its potential use, right? Um, yeah, and, and, and I'm okay to keep that flexible as long as we can just say that, that, that only one connection will be had, not two, in case the properties are combined. And if the, yeah. if the properties are combined, it would make sense um, that they have one access as opposed yes. to... Yes, yes. Because and, presumably it's the same property owner, it's the same development. Right. And, and I think I that's a reasonable request. Yeah, and I don't need to fight about which one it is at this point. I think that could that could resolve itself in the future because you're whoever said it. It probably depends on what the use is. Although, to assume that there's going to be housing next to the between a commercially zoned land and a and a cemetery is, I think, a bit of a stretch. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and the cemetery is not going anywhere. So, uh, so right. Um, <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah. So um, I do have some comments, um, although a lot of them I think were covered um, in uh, by staff in the technical review and the work that you've already done, uh, working everything out. Um, but um, as as far as like the architecture and the elevations, um, I didn't. I don't have a problem with the roof line. Um, I noticed it that it wasn't. It was flat, but, and that you just had the pavilions. But I think with the awnings that are, you know, shed or hit roof, and then the, the hit roof pavilions and the extension, I think you provide enough on the major building so that it's not just looks like a box. Um, and I think that was the reason why we had that in code in the first place is we didn't want um, concrete boxes. So I don't have a problem with that divergence. Um, the car wash, I'm so-so on. Um, I understand the need for windows in the car wash. I don't know exactly how big those windows are in terms of scale to a car um, and how large they need to be, but I don't have a problem um, with the thought of the windows. If they could be smaller, um, you know, I don't necessarily need to see the bottom of someone's car that's going through the car wash. <laughs> um, and then um, I'm trying to think what else you had in the way of your divergences. Um, the signage. signage. I did have one question about the signage. And actually, if you scroll up to the top of this site plan, um, it has to do with the sign along 23. So in some places, it's shown on the right of that access. And other places, like if you go to your sign plan, it's shown on the left. So I just want clarification. OK, okay. I'm, I'm happy to answer that. And you're right that we are schizophrenic. Uh, the reason why there was a grade issue uh, on the uh, west side of that cut, okay. plus there is a heavy tree line there. 
So okay. it, it's much more visible to move it on the on the right side. So this is the correct location. Okay, that is fine. Just clarify that. And that actually, as far as I'm concerned, was was a, the better answer. I prefer it on that side because uh, one of my issues that I was going to discuss um, is that the property to the west, those are a bunch of residential properties, if I remember correctly. Um, and one thing that wasn't in the application that we have sometimes are like lines of sight when you have a commercial building next to a residential building. So the residential people don't get all upset because yeah. they're hearing and seeing your car wash and things of that nature. Or if you have also like landscaping, like you talked about how you didn't have any landscaping along 23, um, landscaping, you know, along um, where the residential part is yeah. to show that they won't see the yeah. car wash or they won't be impacted. Yes. Do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Oh, I, I, I perfectly get I, okay. I, I, I expect it. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I didn't see it in the application, so I thought I would just... Yeah. Well, well the sideline studies apparently are in the application. I, I well, have to admit I haven't looked at them, but I, I know Michelle has them. Can I, uh, can I just share an example of what we would yes, please. the sightline okay. example? Um, mm -hmm. Because I did see that in the plans and I didn't call it out specifically, but the way previous applications have done it, it's a lot more under, it's easier to understand what the residents would be able to see. Okay, so, very good. It's pretty diagrammatic, but. Yeah, yeah let me see. Yeah, this. yeah, we did this extensively at uh, Seldom Scene and uh, Sawmill. Uh, I haven't done it um, as extensively here, so. We, we know how to do it, so okay. we'll fix so it. It's, it's just to sort of um, make sure that because you're right next to a residential area um, yes. and you're a commercial and there will be cars and headlights and- Oh, you know, sure. Yeah, you know. Associated with the uh, gas station. Right, much convenient. right, right. Well, Michelle will tell you, we were sort of pieces and parts here until the last day or so, so. Uh, we, we were able to we're able to get all this done. Yes, I see that. This is what we would like to see, and I'll add that in the comments. That's okay. fine. Well, That's that fine. One thing I noticed. And, um, and and we can mound we can mound on that west side without any problem. There's a lot of land there, and we have a lot of topsoil to do to deal with. So um, uh, I think mounding is very much appropriate there. Okay, so that was just one comment. Um, the other one involves screening is. Um, Usually we get uh, a lot of times um, when, I've, I, when I've had to do this stuff is to do uh, dumpster screening, how we're going to screen the dumpster so people don't see it. Um, and well, I num number one, I'm sorry, number one is that the dumpster, I don't know if it, it's shown appropriately here, but it's, it's entirely brick on three sides. Okay. Uh, so there's no there's no elevation of it, or I couldn't find an elevation. Yeah, we just saying we noticed that, and we asked them to provide that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, but it will be it'll be masonry. It will be brick to match the building on three sides with okay. opaque uh, gates. And that's one thing I noticed as well. So I know the br the building looks like it's going to be brick and stone. Um, yes. Um, but I didn't see exactly, you know. Um, like what type? I'm assuming it's like real brick as opposed to like a thin veneer. There, there is no, there is no, it's all full depth. It's actually, it's not lick and stick either. The stone is not lick and stick. Well, so that's it's, what uh, I wanted to know. If it yeah, was no, it's cultured, it's cultured stone, but it's, it's full thickness. It's four inch thick uh, laid, laid so uh, it, masonry it, stone. Because the elevations aren't really labeled uh, or I yeah. couldn't find that yeah. specification. I just yeah. wanted to make sure, like you said, that it's, um, that it's not lick and stick. That no, no. Uh, or, Don't you or, love that term? That's my favorite term in construction. Or it's not it's like EFIS that's scored to, to look like. No, 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 no. There are no fake materials uh, and there are no thin materials. Okay, so if you could just go ahead and clarify that. I we will, we will take care of it. A lot better. That's what we'll I take, assumed, but I wanted to make sure. We will um, take care of it. <laughs> yeah, and Beth, I know you sent me some of the stuff today, but if you could uh, I label it on the building elevations. I will. I absolutely yeah. will. Yes. Yes. We'll take care of it. And I think that was it. I did have some questions about the traffic study, but I understand that that has been worked out with ODOT um, yep. and everybody. So as long as ODOT has approved it, that's fine. Um, I just sort of questioned the numbers. Um, because right now during COVID, we really don't have rush hour. Let's be honest. Um, a lot of people are still working from home. 
that was a very busy intersection um, yeah. before COVID. Um, well, I still get stuck on 23 sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So to, to, to allay, to allay not, your concerns. It's not like it was uh, a year and a half ago. Yeah, <laughs> to allay your concerns, we, we've been dealing with this uh, in a number of locations. And what we have done is use uh, historic data uh, and and also uh, a uh, increased percentage uh, okay. with with time uh, because it's it's uh, it's actually there are certain jurisdictions that the development has stopped because you can't get a a, a real traffic study but um, uh, ODOT had some fairly current numbers from this in when I say fairly current uh, you know two years ago uh, numbers from this intersection so we were able to use those. Okay, I was just curious. Like I said, if if ODOT and y'all have come to some sort of agreement, and you know, I I I, I will follow yeah. county engineer and ODOT. Um, they're the professional. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. We had we had two engineering departments and three opinions. We were good. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's about it. And the only other comment I had, and I agree with uh, Dennis, um, that the moving the sign along 23 to the south part of your property, I think, is a good idea as well. Okay, very good. Um, especially because that's where the um, access is along 23 anyway. Um, and you won't have the, the trees north of it blocking it. It's right by your building. It's right by your drive. It, yes. I think it'll okay. be convenient for motorists. Um, so that was sort of my two cents. Uh, I think that covered it all. Thank you. And also, thank you for all the help. Uh, uh, Christine is, was uh, there with us in all these pre-app meetings and offering uh, uh, opinion and assistance and is very much appreciated. Well, I am good. Okay. Sierra here is here. I agree with all the commentary thus far. I think this looks great. Um, I love the pavilions that lead out to the multi-use walkways. Um, and my only comment was regarding the landscaping. Um, I do agree that some of the landscaping should be uh, shown in the concepts, but I, I, I did see a document um, in the application that listed out the landscaping. Um, yes. so I think just having a visual to see it uh, with the conceptual plans would be great. Yep. Yep. We're going to make sure that before it goes to the trustees, that all these things will be filled in and perfect and wonderful. Um, matter of fact, I think Michelle suggested that we'll hold off uh, for a final vote for trustees for probably another month um, so that uh, we can make sure that everything is clear and, uh, and uh, complete. Awesome. Sounds good. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should have looked at that. The problem there are some minor changes in the site plan, but but that's basically it. And you'll notice we're preserving the uh, the wetland area out on uh, Orange. I didn't even bring that up. Hey, Michelle, I got a quick question for you. Is, is there overhead utilities right there at that Orange Road intersection? Do you know? I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, if we had the if we had the survey, we could see them. Uh, Joe, do you know? I believe there's some power poles along 23. Um, I don't think they extend along Orange, so there would be a couple right at the intersection. The reason why I ask that question is since you're you're doing it in the lane, the extra lane through there is the utility uh, relocate. Uh, that would be my only concern is if, if, you know, have, if there's oh, any relocation, is your sign going to be in, um, you know, it has to be approved by the utility, right? For no, height, we're, we're, for clearances. Yeah, yeah. We're, our signs are 20 feet from the right of way. Um, yeah. So, so there's, there's ample room there and you're right. We're going to have to work with the utility, the utility companies, but um, uh, you know, we, we believe there is enough room for all that work to occur. Uh, and if we have to push the sign a little farther from the right of way to accomplish it, we will, but I don't believe we will need to. Okay. I was going to make a comment. Yes, I saw the environmental assessment with the, with the wetlands and I'm fine with that as long as you go to the proper permitting authorities, whoever they may be. Um, one of the problems we have in the township, or people wouldn't call it a problem, is that 
half of the township drains into the Olentangy and generally the other half drains into Alum Creek. Uh, and in the past, they've required permitting. Um, sure. Well, yeah. we're going to do an unusual thing for a developer. We're not going to disturb the wetland. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Um, just sorry, this is a side note, but I noticed somebody's in the waiting room uh, by the name of Carolyn. Was the app applicant expecting somebody by that name? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Because this, this meeting, and just I know we have new board members, uh, this meeting is not open for public comment. It is a public meeting. So if people that do want to tune in, they can watch on our YouTube channel. So I will message her and let her know. But just wanted to make sure. Very good. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Is that all the comments? Thank you, Frank, for uh, that wonderful presentation. You guys did a good job here with this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate the cooperation on the staff's part and the board's part. And thank yes, you. and I you will. Um, you get them early. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I will take all the commission's comments, put it in, um, add it to our technical review comments, and uh, share that with the board members and the applicant. Very good. Okay. Yes. Okay. We adjourn. Thank you. All right, now there's Thanks, still a little daylight left, guys. Okay, <laughs> good night. All right.